previously on Rubiego. We now own a car here. What we're using is a live fence, which is made from reclaimed wood. We decided to do the Kenyan version of a well, which people here call a borehole. That's why I took call the Naga. I thought he was the best person for this because I could tell him, do this, do that, and then he's on board. Despite being situated on a sidewalk, this is a full service shop and they do anything from small, medium to massive jobs right here on the sidewalk in the middle of town. We needed to come up with foundation or a platform. After a while we realized that was way too big for what we wanted. So at the end we just wound up with 18 by 14 meters. Oh my god that is our fence. This was not here before. This was not here before. I'm like no you just do what I'm telling you. We ran into some issues. You have to stick around to see what happened. So we told you the story of how this all started, how we got our car and how we got to Aldora. And now we want to dedicate the next couple of videos to really diving deep. Having reached Aldora late at night, we woke up late the next morning to head over to the site and see it in daylight with our own eyes for the first time. It is the next morning. It is late. It's 10:19 because I couldn't wake up and I think nobody else could either. But we're walking to the farm. You can already see up ahead, there's our fence. You can see those posts sticking up way above the fence and you can see the platform for our water tower. This is insane. When your house plan is a drawing on an iPad, sometimes you need to make a couple of adjustments when it comes time to go from that drawing to real life. We spent some time walking around with Nyaga, getting the final dimensions for the bathrooms. We have our foundation, so we need to start making our back wall and also start creating our bathroom. We have to choose our materials. We really like the construction that we saw at Milima where they had the stones that's like exposed. So we want the same type of structure. So when we were on our car shopping walk back in Nairobi, we actually found a place that sold the exact thing that we were looking for, which Sheila told us was referred to as bush stones. It's the same thing that we're gonna use for our shampoo. This is it. So they just put it there and it's just, Irregular, but this is like literally shaped. They're actually sold by the inch instead of individually or by weight because of their irregular shape. We loved how these were implemented in Milima. They made it look amazing there, but also we loved the absence of uniformity. The irregularity of all the individual stones was exactly the look and feel that we were going for. So we found some in Eldor, and me, Diana, and Sheila went to pick up our very first order. Minutes after they were being delivered to the site, and Yaga and his team started making a very first layer. By the end of that day, you could start to see where things were going to be. Enough so that we can give you a tour. This is the kitchen. The kitchen. There. Yeah, the bathroom. The here. And then here is another bathroom. Another bathroom here. Then here. Whoops, let's try this again with more battery, more stones, and nicer clothing. So, here the bathroom. Then, here is the kitchen. And then, again, here the bathroom. Here the bedroom. Here the living room. It ends over. Here, bedroom. Again, here is the veranda, up to. We also had to get a head start on some of the utilities. We already had our borehole. It was time to get a tank to go on top of the really nice tower that was made for us while we were still in Nairobi. Situated on the outskirts of Eldoret town, right next to Rupa Mall, there is a place called Heat Suppliers, which surprised me the first time I entered because it seemed, out of anything I saw in Kenya, the most like a U.S. hardware store. Soon, we picked it out and ordered it, a 3,000 liter Ken tank. Since our fence is a life fence, we needed to add more life to it. We felt it was so important for us to put some flowers, some tree, which could look beautiful, but also it's more reinforcement. We went to the local nursery, so we're going to get some of the beautiful plants that acts as good fence and also bring beauty to the compound. We're going to do a mix up of the yellow ones there and the kayapas, or I don't know what it's called, I think that's the word. And then that one, the bottle brush. So we're just gonna mix it in there. For now, we're just gonna focus on the fence. And then after they are done like with everything, and then now we, when we have the, we see the compound, you're like, okay, we're gonna put this in the middle here, we're gonna put that in the middle here. And we already have some ideas of other places where we're gonna put some stuff. So, so excited. I'm thinking this 
one to go around the tent. And then you uh, yellow need one any. morning we are walking to go see our tents they are being delivered as we speak this is a really really exciting milestone because once these things are in it's gonna start looking like a house or whatever it's supposed to be yeah but wait 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 before we get into that let's go back to nairobi and see what's going on with the tents we had two meetings after the one we showed you on the previous video the first one was the placement of the windows and the doors. But in the next meeting, we got to see the final product. Now over okay. here, there's nothing because this, this is gonna be up against a fixed structure. Yeah, it's gonna be on the wall. This side is what's gonna be up against the edge of the path. So there's no way to get out here. That's why we just have three big windows all the way across and there's a way to close them from the inside. Yeah. This is how you get in. You walk in and then there's two windows and that's it. This is the screen for the big doors. It hasn't gone in yet, but it's going to. The frames were not ready yet, but we stopped at the fabrication shop to see the progress. Previously we showed you how we started this crazy process with the tent. We didn't know what we were getting. We had a miscommunication so bad, we thought we were gonna wind up with a tent that had no roof. Fortunately, that didn't turn out to be the case. But the problem we did have, the frames were just bare. Aesthetically, that was not giving. Mm -mm. I didn't mind the look because I figured we'd cover it up some other way later, but we had to compromise. The deal was we order the PVC cover for the frame and then that's it. We don't order any roofing over the tents, just like how they were in Samburu. But once we decided that, for the first time, we got to go inside our tents and see what it felt like to be in our future bedroom. Wow, this is, this is a big bedroom. And the screen's going on. So this is the wall that can come down all the way with just this small pillar in between. This can be solid. It can be a screen like that, or it can come all the way up and be open. This will go into the living area. That's the front door. You can have it closed. You can have these screens open, or you can pull those flaps up. And then this will be the side that's at the end of the pad. So you just have three big windows here that you can close. There's still a bunch of things we're figuring out right now. We're doing this as we go, but we're just kind of doing the final alignment check, getting this roughly to the point where we want it. We're making sure everything opens and closes the way it's supposed to. You can see like this screen still needs to be fully installed. We waited to finish the roofing plan until we could see how this all fit in. Originally, we were thinking we wouldn't have any roof over the tents because they have their own protection, but then we're gonna run into a drainage problem. So we'll decide how we're gonna manage that. From there, we'll start making this happen. Do you remember what we told you before? We ran into some issues. That's all we have for today. In the next video, we're gonna show you the snag we hit that resulted in us having to completely rethink everything. Uh and what ultimately led into this project spiraling so far out of control to the point we could have never imagined. Don't miss it.